Welcome to this workshop. So this is the, I'm not sure now, the sixth workshop or I think something like that. We're, we're done. And I'm kind of going deeper and deeper into some kind of issues. And, and today the idea is to look at this idea of principles of power. So this is a really kind of uh, huge topic and very, very broad. So in terms of the work, we can kind of attack it from lots of areas, which is also a kind of interesting topic. And it touches on some very interesting areas. So the first thing I want to look at is just the idea of, of power itself. And, and the, main, the main kind of way to look at it is actually, is actually a little bit to go outside of Ikea for a little bit and, and actually look at the idea of, of, of athletic power and, and the idea of generating a, a kind of athletic power is the best way to look at it. And, and for me, it's best to look at it in terms of outside Ikea. We can look at it in terms of Ikea, which we'll, we'll do anyway, but just think in terms of what we know about power in, in, in general. So uh, we'll basically start, start with some, some movements that are a bit outside the box in a way. So we're just gonna start with just, just, just some little loosening movements. And I'm gonna focus, there's, there's basically these three areas that I want to focus on. And they basically translate to physical, lateral, and rotation movements. So we're gonna just explore these three areas and, and all the things we're going to kind of touch on will, will be based on one of these three, and then we'll start to kind of combine them together. So as we kind of normally start, we're just going to start with a little bit of loosening up. And this primary direction is the vertical. So we'll just get moving. And just start to lengthen the body. Feel the body kind of sink down into the ground. And you saw I sent out these kind of three principles of power. That, that come from a kind of really an athletic viewpoint. So, and what I'm going to do is work backwards through them because they're actually in the, for me they're in the wrong order. So, the first one is this aligning to gravity. So, the first kind of principle is looking into gravity. So, this is really the perfect exercise just to feel the weight of the body and just. Let it all, let the whole body just sink down into the ground. Good. And just explore a little bit in this case, because I'll leave the ground a little bit. And let the body sink down. Okay, and just keep moving. I'm just going to kind of watch everyone. Just keep, yeah, that's it. And just explore also the head, the arms. When we do these kind of seta exercises in the morning all the time, then the arms are kind of tend to be very loose, but just feel that you can also play with the hand a little bit and also play with the head. This is a kind of big area that will really affect the balance of the body. And just, you, know, you can more and more feel the body sinking into the ground. And also play with the feet just in the ground and just feel that you can kind of drop and kind of pulse the weight through the whole system. And really in this case, just let the body go. So you're basically going to pulse down and then just feel a kind of reverb through the body. So feel a kind of run. That's it. Just feel a kind of pulse. Now, if we look in terms of athletic power, in terms of using gravity and the weight of the body, it doesn't matter if I leave the ground or not. So if you think about a uh, shot put, discus, or, or kind of a javelin thrower, they will tend to lose, lose, leave the ground. So they'll kind of leap out of the ground with the movement, which is, which is really, really, in a way, it's kind of necessary for athletic kind of ability. But in terms of martial arts, we don't tend to want to be leaving the ground. We'll, we'll look at, we'll kind of explore this area later. But just for now, just feel that the whole body can also leave the ground. We don't tend to kind of jump around in Aikido too much, you'll kind of notice. Just for now. Just feel the whole weight of the body lead and sink into the ground. So just do a few now, feel that you can kind of gather up, jump, and then let the body drop down. So you're slightly opening it out. A little bit like you kind of power. Roland will be good at this from the from the punk punk times so and you kind of jump up and you just let the body sink down. And just do a few like this, just let the body leave the ground and feel the mass <clears throat> hit the ground and reverb right up. That's it. That's it. 
and just really, really try and feel the heaviness of the body. Yeah. And just keep going. I'm just going to talk a little bit. Just in this case, I'm going to use a kind of ball as a metaphor. The ball is a kind of perfect, it's a kind of ideal object. So in this case, you've got these three, three, three uh, things that can act on the, on the, on the ball. The first one we're looking at now is gravity, so which is basically the ball's just going to drop towards the ground. Now that's a kind of effortless action. It just gets attracted to the ground. Now for us, in terms of human perception, to put it in one way, the ball is dropping down. So for us, gravity translates as a kind of downwards force. But gravity is not really about things moving down. It's about attraction. So it's about attraction of a greater mass or a smaller mass to a greater mass. So in this case, the great mass of the Earth and we're the small mass. So in this case, just feel you're really minuscule and the Earth's really huge. So as you go, there's really no effort needed. The body just has the feeling of being boom, drawn down to the ground. So just a little bit like this. Now for, us, for our perception, it is a downwards, downwards movement. But in reality, what's happening is just that you're being drawn down. Now your whole body, your whole structure has been designed by that force. So all, all, all your functionality is really designed to align to this principle, which is gravity. For us, it feels like a downwards pull. Just a little bit back. Good. Okie dokie, good. Right. The next direction is this kind of lateral movement. So just go now side to side, like this. Just that. Now you can also play with front and back, but for me, this is a clearer direction. The direction is very, very clear. And what I want you to think about now is, is basically the weight being distributed across the body. So really feel that the body, this is really like a swaying movement. So feel that the body's really being drawn, drawn out this way. That's it. So really feel there's a kind of directional movement. That's it. That's it. And just see if you can kind of open the body up a little bit. Just feel the weight shifting down to one foot. The other foot's very loose. And yes, start to work the body. Good, keep going. Super. That's it, there you go. So the other thing that can happen to the ball is, is a directional movement. So the second, the second thing is, in terms of power is, is movement of mass. So it can travel in space. Now that's not, for, for us, that kind of looks maybe a bit similar to gravity. But because gravity is not really about things moving down, it's about attraction. But movement's really about the thing moving relative to something else. Now, everything we do is kind of relational, so you need, you need a kind of fixed point of reference. So if you think in terms of planets orbiting, the one thing moves around. So, so in terms of movement, it's about relation to something else. So in terms of, it seems kind of obvious to say, but in terms of a shot put thrower or a javelin thrower or a discus thrower, it's about moving the, the object to another place. And I do that actually by also moving the body. So it's about tra the traveling the, the, the mass of the body in a, in a direction. So just play a little, yeah, that's it, yeah. And also play now, if you have your, if you have the objects, we'll go a little bit into this. Just play a little bit with, don't let it go, but just play with slightly throwing it out. Now, this is gonna go into kind of rotational movements. Almost, almost naturally, you'll start to go into rotational movement. But just think now, just in terms of a, of a, of a directional movement. So try and, don't try and avoid a rotational movement, but just think in terms of basically moving the object from one place to another. Now, in terms of Aikido work and where we'll go later, this is all based on arcs, not linear movement. So again, think in terms of planets rotating or orbiting around the, around a, the sun or another star. Other stars are available. But just think about something's kind of orbiting. Good. We're going to go a little bit more into these exercises next, but this is just to get a kind of feel for it. So that's about basically what, uh, mass, transference of mass. In a, in, a, in a kind of, or a transference of weight across a, across a space. So you've got gravity, the first one, and the second one is a directional movement. For us, that's about working with circles and arcs. So, 
And the last one is really where, for, where, where we work most of the time is working with the rotation. So this is the exercise we tend to kind of start with a lot of the time. I just do a narrow sense of rotation movement. Again, start nice and small. Feel the weight just sink into the ground, spiral down, right in between the feet. Nice and small, keep the arms nice and loose. And again, we'll go into these a little bit more later. Just start to feel the center of the body. So this is the feeling of really centering the body and the movement starting in the center and passing out to the periphery, especially now the hands. That's it. That's it, good. That's it, that's it, that's it. Good. And as we're kind of warming up the body a little bit, just start to play with loosening the movement out, coming towards the ground. You can also really kind of drop the body down, just play a little bit with opening the movement out, opening the lower body. Now, the, the, the idea with all these exercises is that the upper body is really a kind of servant to the lower body. In, a, in want of a better word, I don't have a better word. The, but the, the, the lower body, the lower body is basically grounded, heavy, relaxed, and the upper body as well is relaxed. But it's really going to move with the lower body. So just feel now, the lower body is the kind of driver, and the upper body is the passenger. Oh, that's a better one. The, the upper body is a passenger for the lower body. That's it. just play, open it out a little bit. So. Okay, good. Yeah, and then if in terms of the ball, in terms of the other movement that it can make or the other thing that can happen to it is that it can spin. So it can spin and rotate. So that again, it has nothing to do with gravity. Well, it has a lot to do with gravity later, but if we split the movement out for now and it has nothing really to do with directional movement, but it's a kind of separate movement, which is from the core of the, the, the body, it's gonna spin. So that's really the, really the kind of last direction we've got. So you've got gravity, which for us is a kind of downwards pull, pull, and you've got directional movement. And the last one, you've got a feeling of the center rotating and spinning. Now for us, it works as a kind of spiral out, because if you think the core, the core initiates the movement and it leaves the periphery. So in essence, it's coming out into a spiral. So just the last few, just play with it. And then we're going to go into these three exercises that we do. Good. Yeah, 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 super, super, good. Nice. And really just play open the movement out now. Good. Yeah, and the last few, just really play with the direction. So you go up, down, just play within them. Normally what we do in Seitai is you would do the five directions and then you would mix them all in and you would spend kind of 15, 20 minutes just mixing, playing with the directions, and just feeling the body. And this is really about a kind of, these exercises are really about vitality. So it's about filling the whole body and filling the whole body with your, with your feeling. What well, the Chinese case is kind of, what do they call it? They kind of call it like a, like a mind fluid. You're, you're kind of, you're filling the body with your mind. You're trying to really fill every inch of the body. So just play a little bit with these directions. Just mix them all in. Really fill the body nice and free. You feel a kind of tension in one joint, just kind of work it a little bit with movement. You're really working with movement, weight. And set. Good. So good. Very nice. Great. So. Okay. Good. So we're going to go to these first exercises, and again, we'll work through the structure like this. First, working with the principle of gravity. So the perfect exercise for this, uh, if, if we go into an active movement, so away from this one, this is a kind of passive movement. If we go to a kind of active movement like we were doing in Aikido. This is working with the swing. So you're going to have the feet shoulder width apart. You're just going to swing up and then drop the body. So this is really working with the principle of gravity. Just let everything drain down. And if you've got an object that you can hold, 
in the hand. Just try it with this. Normally we do it without, and it's it's also possible to do without, but just for a kind of extra feedback. And a little bit more of a feeling of weight in the hand. Now for us, this movement seems maybe a bit abstract, but for us it relates totally to the Bokken work we do. So any kind of weapon work we do, is again, it's about relating the movement to gravity and aligning to the object, to what the object's doing, what the object wants to do. Well, wants is the wrong word. What will happen to the object. And again, just get a feel for the fact that the ball, if you just release the ball, it will go to the ground automatically. So the ball would just drop. Okay, so just try and get a feeling that this is done without effort. So we'll come to like effortlessness, effortlessness later, but we'll just start to kind of introduce it a little bit here as well. Really feel that there's no effort needed to just draw and swing back up. There maybe is a little bit of effort. You might feel a little bit of effort here to hold up, but just feel that the, the, the swing, the release. Mm -hmm. So the feeling's really like, yeah, you just, everything just boom, drops towards the ground. And that's just the natural attraction of the, the earth. Good. And it's funny when people talk about just gravity being discovered, they talk about Isaac Newton and the, about the apple falling to the ground. Now, Isaac Newton didn't discover that the apples fall down. Everyone knew apples fall down. He realized that the, the, the greater mass is attracting a smaller mass. That's, the, that's a really incredible distinction to make because nobody made that before. Well, maybe, no, maybe people did, but they didn't, they didn't express it. So this is about a greater mass, really, really attracting them to the ground. Now for us, it means that the, the earth's just pulling the body down constantly. So that's a kind of, again, it's a kind of distinction in feeling. Just play with it a little bit. Good. Here we go. Oh, good. Okay, we'll do another exercise for this, which is which is kind of based on grounding and gravity, but again, it's a little bit more active. So, I don't know if we've done this before in the classes, but what you're going to do now is draw the body up as if you're kind of loading a spring here. Let's see the backs of the knees kind of extend, draw the arms up here, and then what you're going to do is come down into a squat and draw the arms down to this position. And then what you're gonna do from here, draw back up, and then you're gonna sink back down. Now again, the real tendency now, this is a much more active move, just try a few, is, is to do this, to push the arms down. Now what I want you to do is just keep again that same feeling, you load the movement up, and then you let it drop. So the arms now are actually quite relaxed. There's, there's, a, there's a kind of innate tension, but the, the tension is coming from the pull of gravity but it's not coming from tension into internal tension from me. So draw up, you set the move up, and then you just let it drop. Draw up, set the move, and then drop. That's it. This is a very similar exercise to, 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 to the kind of torsion exercise, so this kind of this move. For me, this is a, this is a better way to train it because I, 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 I can just really straight towards the ground. And this is also very much a challenge on the body because now what you will feel is as I come down, the, the tendencies to come up into the shoulders. So really, in this case, just use the sense of length through the body, through this move, and then release it, but maintain the sense of length through the whole spine as you come up. Just give it a try. That's it. Let's see. That's it. Okay. Good, good, good. Ah, good, 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 good. Yeah, good. Yeah, and already some of you are going into this, so so just keep where you are if you're doing it. But now just start to basically bring it all together. So you're going to do this, up, this, up. So now the feeling's really like kind of, it's a kind of rowing exercise. But it's using really a sense of aligning to gravity. So just feel now, 
the, the main thing in this case is feel the kind of pull of the ground. So it's less, again, it's less about doing, actively doing it, and more about letting it happen, which seems like the same thing, but got to make a kind of, again, it's about just making a, di a difference in, in my feelings. If I either do it, or I let it happen. Which sounds kind of passive, but um, what I'm doing is setting the structure up so that it can happen in the most efficient way. So it's not really about being passive, it's, it's about allowing the movement to happen through the body. That's it, yeah, good. That's it, super, super, super. Good, very nice. So. And again, these are exercises you can do for, for five, five, 10, 15 minutes. The longer, the better in terms of my view, because the more, the longer you do it, the more efficient you get at it. Or the more, the more inefficient you get and you realize how inefficient I'm, I'm, I'm making the movement. So for me, if you do anything after this, just play a little bit with these, with these exercises for a little bit longer. But uh, due to time, we'll go a little bit further into it. So the next one, the next direction is this kind of um, directional movement which is basically working with arcs. So we'll, we'll go to the exercise we do with the shoulders. So what I want you to do now is just, again, feel the shoulder width apart, and then just feel that the swing of the arms connecting to the hip. Now you can do this just one-sided, because it, you might find it a little bit easier. So just play a little bit now. One side. If you've got two objects later, just do this as two, but just for now, feel one side grounding down, and just one hand swing. That's it. That's it. This is a bit like the, one of those Newton, Newton's cradles. So you've got this kind of move. But basically the ball's gonna just swing out. And I want the feeling in this case, as the, as the hand comes to the side, I want the feeling that the hip catches the ball or catches the object or the hand if you're not using an object. But just feel that the, there's a feeling that the hip's connected to the hand and it just carries it. Just carries it. And just see if you can make this as, as effortless as possible. So again, you can do this with a great amount of effort. Like basically doing this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is basically calisthenic kind of workout, but just try and see if you can make it very effortless. And as effortless as you can, which basically means no effort. No effort is involved. Which again, find it seems passive, but it's just about setting the movement up and adding nothing to it, just letting it happen. That's it. Good. And just play a little bit. Directional movement. And again, if I allow this to happen, I, the, the movement will automatically become an arc. So it'll automatically have kind of smoothness to it. If I do it, the tendency is for it to break into pieces. But if I let it happen, automatically it starts to move in an, in an arc. And that's really where we want to start for, for in terms of Aikido movement. And this seems like such a simple exercise, but it's got all these kind of principles that we need in a very, very simplified way. Very accessible. Yeah, so. Okay, good. Now, just just be very conscious of the hips. So if I'm really rigid in the hips or, or, or I feel a kind of tension in the hips, the tendency is to <laughs> uh, And I feel automatically now tension through the body. So as I come here, I feel that the, the, the quad is now going like this. And as I go this way, now this one goes. So basically the, 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 this part of the leg is gonna take over from because the hip's not free. So just feel in this case, you can really free the hips. And there should be no sense of the body holding itself. Just let everything break down. Try and, try and, in a sense, the best way is that you create tension and you need to invite relaxation because tension is our basic kind of our holding pattern. And it, it comes from experience or living. And I just want to invite much more relaxation into the, into the body which again is about not doing, rather than doing. And then just start to, once you can start to really free the hips out, 
start to open the movement up now much more. Now the movement's going to come into the spine, and it basically means that the spine's going to rotate 90 degrees. Dong, dong, dong. And now it's going to happen that the arms just get swung up. So again, it's not about swinging them, it's just about letting the movement really be carried through the shoulder. So the shoulders needs to be a kind of open gate, just swing through it. That's uh, good. Just play a little bit with this. And if you do this at home, don't do this with a really, really heavy object. So this is, to start with, do this with something quite light. So something like a kilo, maybe less. Good. Okay, great. Just feel the pulled. That's uh, Good. Okay, good. Very good. And now just start to really open the movement out. So if you think in terms of, if you think in terms of a complete directional movement, then it's in terms of an orbit. So a planet around a, a planet around a star. Just now think about this kind of orbiting the body. So you're going to kind of work up into it. It goes here. Keep the body nice and grounded. Start to swing the spine out to the sides. And then just feel the weight, the momentum's going to start to just now carry over. So just work your way into it. If you feel like you lose the connection, just drop it down and then just start again. And the key to it is in this very first moment, so connecting to the ground and releasing the hips. And just start to work up to it. That's that. Start to increase the movement. So in a way, it's not about generating power, it's about aligning to the principles. We tend to think of power in the wrong way, so it's about generating, it's about letting things be rather than doing. That's it. Just let it go. That's it. That's it, good, 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 good. Good. Super, 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 super. Good. That's it. Stop. Good. Okay, so the last, the last movement that, that can happen is this kind of rotation of spin on the ball. So for us, this translates into spirals. And we, we work with this kind of movement. And this is a kind of passive move again. The arms are very very heavy, very dead, and you just kind of spiral into the ground. So we're going to work now into, and again, more of an active move. We'll let the arms come out to the sides, and we've done this before a lot in the, in the mornings. Just let the arms drop and find the shoulder. In this case, just try, basically one side. So I'm going to hide the other object behind the back, swing the arm out to the side, and then just release it. Yeah. Now, again, this has relationships with the last exercise in terms of an arc through the body. But what I want you to think of is the spiral that happens through the ground this way. So the body's now doing a rotational move like this. Now for us, this translates so easily into Aikido work that it's such a great exercise, but just for now, just let the, let the hand find the shoulder. If you've got a heavy object, just be careful you don't hit yourself too hard in the shoulder. So, sounds a bit obvious, but you never know. That, that, okay. Just let it swing and just try both sides. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. That's good, 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 good. Now, in a way, the heavier the object, the more I have to release, and it will just force me into it. So, this is why a, a heavier object later is better. If I have a light, just watch this. One, one thing I can get away with now is, is kind of holding and carrying the movement, which I'm basically doing through contraction. I'm doing, I'm doing through doing this. So I'm doing like a kind of oh, I, I'm doing like this, but what I want to do in this case is just release and allow the natural elasticity in the arm to just go. So again, it's about a kind of core movement. Oi, hello. And it's about a kind of core movement acting through. Good. 
and just be on, really honest about it, whether you feel like you're kind of carrying it or you're kind of letting it release. That's it. Good. Okay, good. And then just come into two sides, just here. Now, what's going to happen is the back hand, as you swing one hand, is automatically just going to find come back. Now, it's going to come around somewhere around the lower back or the opposite hip. So it's going to just again, just allow it to go down. Just let it swing and release it. And again, you can do this two ways. I'll show you two ways. You can do this one-sided, dong, release, dong, release the same side. Or you can, if you feel you've got really the connection, do both sides. So do right, left, right, left. And if you're really working on the connection, just do one side, really, one side, really, one side. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. So, ah, so good. Okay, good. And now just be really aware of one thing. We use these, I use these exercises really as kind of centering practices. So this is about really centering and balancing the body. So again, it's an issue we come to much later, but for now just really be careful about the movement coming to the front. Now I'm really exaggerating it, but this. this basically happens around again. I, even a, even a, basically in this case, millimeters matter. So if I swing the body out to the front, I just feel that the weight's being distributed now into the wrong place of the foot. So just trying to get, just trying to balance the body. Feel a spiral is being passed right in the space between the feet. So again, in terms of athletic power, if you think in terms of discus, you'll see, see the person really comes in here and then throws the body out of the of their own base. Now that's perfectly fine for for, for athletic. But for us, in terms of functional martial interaction, we really need to have a clear sense of the ground at all times. So that's one of the differences that we, we need in terms of martial interaction. Especially Aikido. That's, yeah, 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 good. So. Good. Now, in a way, this is a very complex, complex movement. This is a, this actually comes from a tai chi. This is a tai chi movement. I'm going to do a very simple one, and it, it's going to it's going to be a bit maybe a bit funny. But in this case, what I want to do is, is really think like a kind of spiraling orbit. So the arms are or the arms are at the side, and again, it goes back to this exercise. But what you can do now is really open it out. So I'm basically going to start to move the whole body this way. Now, just watch that you don't release the hands, release the the grip on the hands. I really feel a sense of rotation through, rotation through, rotation through. So just allow both sides to basically be swung out. That's it, yeah. So just open the movement out. So, okay. Interesting. Good. Ah, yeah. Good. That's it. That's it. Just got to That's uh, good, good, good. Okay, so just just pause a second. Just look at this picture. So this is the picture I use for the poster. It comes from a really ancient Greek statue. This is a this is a Roman copy, but um, this is called Discobolus. So it's a, it's a it's a it's a sculpture of of a of a discus thrower. It appears. But uh, so in this cartoon, it was described as a piece to make a scratching his scratching his knee. But uh, there's there's a there's a bit of debate in this case of, of whether the, the, the posture of the of the thrower is 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 efficient or not. 
So in terms of modern discus playing, throwing, they actually discuss whether this posture is actually efficient or inefficient. But what it does represent for me is a cut. This, I mean, it's Greek's always about ideal form and beauty and rhythm and all these kind of things. But what what it expresses for me is a sense of a really clear spiral line through the body. So if you look at the feet, you see one really grounded foot, totally in the ground, and you see the other foot. It's like it's peeling off the ground. Yeah. Now, what you have is a sense of a coil. It's like a helix through the feet, through the body. If you can see this in real life, it, obviously it's a sculpture, but you have a real clear sense of a spiral running all the way through the body, through, yeah. through the, from the feet, through the hips, and then out into the hands. The other interesting thing I like about this statue is a sense of calmness in the face. So there's zero strain in the face. I don't know if I can zoom in and you can see it. Can you see the face more clearly? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. So well, there's, there's like zero strain in the face. So he's totally in a, in a moment of extreme tension or extreme stress on the body. He's totally calm and relaxed. Now, for me, that's a really, really, really great image for what we want in Aikido in terms of effortlessness. So this, for me, has lots of kind of elements to it. And that's really why I chose it for, the, for this workshop, because it's so it's such a kind of powerful image. So... Just in terms of that, just all I wanted to do is just play a little bit. I don't want to be a discus player, and I'm 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 actually no good at discus. <laughs> I tried at school and it was terrible. I, even even worse, I'm bad at javelin. So I just want you to play with three actions. There's there's basically three. We've got a little bit of time. I'm going to go a little bit over, but so there's, you've got these three principles, which is basically gravity, this kind of directional movement, which translates to the kind of arcing movement. And the third one, this kind of rotational movement. Now, for me, they translate very clearly into three disciplines in terms of Olympics. They translate the first one's like a shot put. So it's about creating a creating a uh, very clear grounding into the body. So I just want you to try the first one. It's a bit like a, I'm, I'm no shot put expert. I don't, never would profess to be. But I just want you to feel obviously shot put as they, they, they find the neck and they get to this position. But I just want you to feel the weight down one side of the body. Come to here and create a really clear line where you're basically going to just spring the body down, load it up, and then release it up towards the sky. Now, don't release the object, but just feel the sense of the ground, the connection to the ground, and then really a sense of what you're going to do now is ground into one foot. Obviously, again, in athletic power, I can leave the ground, so I can really throw the body out with the movement. But in terms of us just slightly contain the movement, but really create a kind of clear sense of the ground, and then just release it and draw it down. Now, for me, this translates very easily into Murtadori, this kind of movement of so here and then coming into this one. So we'll go into these a little bit later, but just, just, just come a little bit outside of the Aikido world and just play a little bit with this movement. I hope there's no shot put kind of bronze medalists in the group because my form's really terrible. So hopefully I get away with it. Yeah, 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 good. So just feel that kind of downward spring and the spring out of the room. Yeah. Uh, so. so for me, this is a question of balance and it's a question of connection. And again, power is about aligning to, to, to the natural function of the body and really allowing it to, to happen. That's it. Yeah, 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 good. That's it. So, 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 super. Just play a little bit with it. Good. Good. Okay. So the second movement, this kind of directional movement, it, for me, it translates really easily into a, into a javelin. So I'm just going to show you. I've got another. There's another sculpture, really, really famous. Let me see. One second. Very, very famous sculpture. You've probably, probably seen it. Let me see. Gonna, 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 gonna share it. Boy, I'm gonna share it later. Just, just think now. Just think in terms of a diagonal through the body. So hopefully you can still see me. Think of, of a really a line that runs through the body this way. Now in terms of, of kind of spear throwing or javelin throwing, you're gonna have the object here. And then again, you're gonna draw through and cast it away this way. So just play a little bit with it. You can also do this with a with a Joe. If you've got a Joe, be very, very careful, especially of TV screens, lamps. But the feeling is to, to balance the Joe in the hand and then really creating a line through the body, opening this line out, 
and you're going to really have the sense of casting it away this way. So just play a little bit with this idea, basically like a, but this is really, really, really an ancient idea. This feel, will feel totally primitive because all your ancestors were, were probably spear throwers. So you've got something in your genetics that just loves throwing spears, like shooting bows and cutting with swords. There's something oh, just... John got there's, John. there's an image here, I don't know if you can see it. From oh, let's see. Where's John? Oh, okay, cool. Let me see. I'm going to add. A TIE theatre with the spear thrower. I'm just going to remove myself. Good, right. Yeah, exactly. This is better. John, send me this picture later. That's really yeah. great. This, if you look at this picture, you can see really grounded in the legs. So you see the, the hips totally grounded, the feet grounded, and really a sense of a line, even through the fingertip. You see it's kind of pointing. Great picture. Super. Yeah. That's better than my example. Good. Just play a little bit with it. Super, super, super. Let me just see. Yeah, 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 good. So just try and feel, again, it's about alignment, connection, structure. That's it. very nice, very nice, very nice. Also try both sides just for kind of exploration. If you're right-handed, it'll be very comfortable to be in the right hand, but just, just for, for feeling a balance, just try with both, both sides. Good. Hopefully no one's outside in a park so you, you will get police swarming you very soon. Look like they're throwing a javelin. Good. Yeah, 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 good. Okay, good. So then the last one really actually relates to the discus because you've got this rotational movement. And again, it's about a kind of spiral line. So in the, they think in ancient Greece that the discus players had to do it from a standing position. So they had to stand and release the discus like this. Now, obviously, in modern discus, you've got this kind of rotational spin. So they introduce this kind of, when you kind of build up, and then you come into it. So you've got a sense of doing this. So you can play a little bit with that. But I'm actually more interested in the, in the ancient kind of technique where I'm basically, the feet are down. And I'm basically going to ground into one foot, release the other, and just release it. So again, it's a kind of athletic move. But just feel... In, in terms of discus, I'm not really an expert on discus playing, but what they say is you start with a 90 degree angle here between the arm and the, and, the, and the side of the body. And then you basically load this up and then you release it. So you load it basically at a kind of 90 degree angle. You'll see also in terms of this discobolus figure is a nice position. The head, the spine is going to align towards the movement. So I'm actually going to look towards the hand as I do it. Now, modern discus players don't do this, but just feel that you can kind of align to the whole movement and then release the whole movement. Again, just think about working with a spiral. That's it. So this is kind of innate kind of tension. So in a, in a sense, it's not tension. It's, it's just loading the whole movement out and then releasing it, like loading a spring. It's, it's kind of compression and, and, and pressure rather than, than tension. That's it. That's it. Good. And again, just explore both sides if you like. And if you want to go into this kind of spinning rotation where you basically really leave the ground, also feel free to go to that. It's also a very nice move to do. It's also nice to kind of leave the ground sometimes. You can do it for long, so just play a little bit. Good. Super, super, super. So. Okie dokie, very nice. Yeah, good, good, good. Super, very nice. Good, okay, so we'll, we'll take a break 
now and then we'll come back into it. So again, those kind of three, the three basic principles are easy to explain with the ball. You've got the pull of gravity or the attraction of a bigger mass to the to a smaller mass to the bigger mass is the first one. And that's the way we're kind of aligned to the ground. You've got the sense of directional movement. So this is basically for us working with arcs. So working by, by moving, moving something and basically uh, yeah, working with arcs. The, the third one is the sense of spin that you've got. And this for us translates just into spiral work. So very, very, very easily into working with spirals and working straight away into kind of cocky work. So that's where these kind of movements come in. We've got a sense of the main the main point of the of the we'll come to later is, is this the spin is about the center first. So all the spin on the on the, the ball is, is basically the center spinning and the, the, the periphery gets spun out with it. So just think in terms of that, it's really about working from the center out to the periphery, just like that. Okay, that's basically it. Hopefully it's not too theoretical. You've got a kind of practical side to it. And then these actions are kind of these kind of movements, shot put, javelin and discus. These kind of relate very clearly to these kind of movements. And then we're going to go back into Aikido next, next class. Okay, so we'll take a little bow out. You can have some water, coffee. So, hey, go on. So we're going to work a little bit with the Joe. Just start by rotating. So just working with these kind of rotational movements. <clears throat> so we'll work with a kind of few issues in terms of these exercises. I really use these in terms of cocky work. So for me, this is about really mobilizing the, the forearm, <coughs> the hand, and the other thing you're really working now seems obviously a bit obvious, but you're working with connecting into a, another object. So just try and feel you're working these two areas, which is basically working with a spiral through the hand from the forearm. And you're working with the idea of connecting into the object. And for us, in terms of Aikido, connecting into the thing, the jaw and the bokken is about really working with the, the underside of the body. So it's about, again, it's prioritizing the, the lower over the upper. So in this case, I can grip in a way like this. Or I can grip in a way where I'm, I'm really grounding the handwork in the back of the body. So if you, if you just play a little bit now, just play with one exercise. It's very, again, very simple. Just play with the idea of, imagine you've got a bokken and you're just gonna kind of strike into the ground. So the feelings, or like a hammer, you're basically gonna kind of hammer with the jaw. Now just feel the difference between working in the front of the grip and working in the back of the grip. So it's a very, very, very subtle change, but it has a huge impact on the body. So just feel what difference it makes. So again, you can play with both sides. Just play with this idea of the grip. So you've got the front, and the back. So this for me is the, the one of the key principles. We're going to go slightly now away from this athletic power. Obviously athletic power is involved in any kind of generation of power. It's just the way the body's function. So what, what we're going to look at now is, is slightly more what's basically known as the, the kind of internal principles or the, the arts like Tai Chi really focus on. And the first, this first kind of principle for me is, again, it relates to the ground gravity. It's about prioritizing the lower body over the upper. So it's about really trying to now find the back of the body and really gunk the ground. So just feel as you make now the strike, it's kind of hammer, hammer below, feel the weight at the same time as you make the strike down with the tip of the jaws, dunk, feel that the weight settles down straight into the feet. That's it. It's a bit like beating a drum. Boom. Now you should have a kind of feeling of like an echo all the way out through the body. Yeah, good. Yeah, and you can also do this with two. It's a big drumstick. Yeah, 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 good. That's it. That's it. Mm. Mm. Good. Good. So for me, all the work we do in Aikido is really about change, how to change. 
how to become more efficient, how to be more free, ultimately, and how to deal with pressure more calmly. So even in this very, 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 very simple exercise, I don't think that you can make a more simple exercise, you even, I, I even feel my own habits come to the body and to the strength, adding momentum. And done. So just really, really, really try and access the core of this tech, the core, of, it's not really a technique, the core of this movement it's about letting things be as they are. So it's just about letting it. Now that is a change, not in technique, but a change in my mentality. It's a change in what I'm doing with my mind. So I either do it, do it, do it, or I let it happen. So just feel now, just, just play a little bit with the, with the stick. It's a little bit where we work with the bokken club. In this case, just feel that you just let it drop. And then I just let it drop. And then I just catch it. And I'm catching it just in the, in the, in the back fingers. But just play a little bit with it. Again, these, the, the, the power in simple movements is that they really reveal our, our habits of how we use our body. And they make it very, very clear. So very simple, but really, really revealing. That's, uh, mm. That's it. Good. And just play a little bit again. It's, it seems a little bit too easy. You might get a little bit bored. Don't get bored with these kind of things. Be kind of fanatic about these kind of simple, simple exercises. You have to be a bit like a child when you do them. So just play now a little bit. You've got the middle of the jaw. Just go down to the, to the bottom half and just feel again. Now the weight's more in the front. The challenge is now greater. So it doesn't feel like a lot, it doesn't feel like a bigger difference, but just that extra weight will really affect how I use the body. So just play a little bit with it and just let the body kind of gently swing things down. Boom. Oh, don't hit the ground. So, so, so just play with kind of swinging it through and then just catching it. And this right now is just again about trying to almost reorganize the body around a principle which says ground over of the, the lower body over the upper body. Go. Oh, good. And the last one, just play with, you basically come to the front third, third of the joke this way. And just play now, you're basically gonna do <coughs> So the movement's now happening in the rear. And just again, feel what happens with the grip and my connection to the jaw. So just play a little bit with it. So it's gonna kind of bump to the back. Bump, 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 bump to the back. That's it. These are also good exercises. If you do these uh, kind of regularly, these are good exercises for kind of training the forearms and the grip. So I use these a lot for grip training. So again, it doesn't feel like a lot. It feels like kind of nothing's really happening. But it's just about training the connection. Michael, is yeah. your rib, um, the pinky or um, the middle when you do this exercise? Um, where is the grip? Is it like the pinky and the ring finger, or is it in the middle? In this, in this, this one. Is actually, hopefully, you can see. I'm going to switch there. Yeah. Just experiment in this case. This is. A little bit, you can you can do this by being in the in the in the back fingers in the back of the arm now okay. but if you think about this kind of logically or if you think in terms of where the power needs to be it's always going to kind of come from the back so in this case also you can play with being in the front two fingers this way so just play a little bit okay. with exploring you basically in this case it's a bit like spock you've got to split the grip <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> I'm really good at <laughs> This grip and I've got this grip. Okay. Which basically means I split the hand in two. Okay. So just play a little bit with it and just feel feel what feel feel what feels more comfortable. Okay. Feel Thank you. Just gibber. Feel what feels more comfortable. I'll say it again anyway. So. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Good. 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 No, no. Good. Okay, good. 
So I'm going to break it down the Joe a little bit, maybe a bit too much, but in this case, with the Joe, you've got a gripping hand and you've got a, what I call the feeding hand. So one hand feeds the Joe or, or the Joe feeds through the hand and the other hand's gripping it. So we've got this kind of action. So that action was kind of training the grip. Now you're going to train the kind of feeding hand. So just work with this. Work with just rolling the Joe through the, through the hand. Oh, I can show in a better direction. This way. Just roll it through. So just play a little bit with feeding through the through the hand. So it's still about connection, but just now a sense of the hand really kind of feeding through it. Just play a little bit to the front, to the back. Michael? Can be a bit kind of childish with this, so you've got to be a bit like Runa. Okay, Runa, go. Got a question. Uh, I'm uh, logging out, logging in again, five minutes. I need to okay. get, get outside. So okay. can you let, let me in again? Just sure, sure. Cool. That's it. Good. Good. Yeah, and again, very, very simple exercise, but just watch for now this. What, what, what's tending to happen a lot, what, what I can see is like the, the, the shoulder kind of throws the arm. The, the, the shoulder does it. So just think in terms of this, again, creating a connection with the hip and really feel that the hip rolls the joke back. And then from here again, creating the connection, which again, is, connection's not about, again, doing actively, ah, I kind of lock it together. It's about feeling. So it's about feeling the connected. Your body's connected anyway, so it's just, it's just the way it, it wants to work. So just try and feel the connection here and then, as much as you can, just kind of throw it out. So again, about do, more about doing less than more, which feels counterproductive to, to generating, the idea of generating power. But connection's the key to all of this. Just try and feel it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a word, I think I think the word for this is tone. There's a kind of tonus. Something happens where the body builds up. So what's happening a lot now is, is you go to connection work. And this happens in the dojo when we go to Moroto Dori and we go like this, and then we go prepare, and then I go. But in this in the case of connection, just try and feel the body during this down, connect, and then you move this way. So try and avoid in this case, there's a sense that the body kind of, the muscles kind of go boom, light up, activate, and then they go. But just see if you can f f find, find a way of connecting that's just instantaneous. So it just happens, but there's no kind of preload and then the movement. I talk about this a lot, but this is really, really essential later for kind of efficient fluid movements. And it's trying to, in a, in a way, you're trying to make the movement as quiet as possible. You should almost, have, the, the feeling should almost be like surprising yourself. The movement goes, whoa, oh. The jaw goes, whoa. That's it. Good. 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 Okay, good. So now just playing with these two ideas, you've got the gripping hand and you've got a feeding hand. So just playing with the jaw a little bit, like you would do in a, in a kind of Sengo Ki. So obviously all the basic forms train these patterns automatically, but sometimes it's, it's really essential to just break them down a little bit. So, so just play now, just keep the feet as they are and just play with this idea of sliding down the jaw, sliding down the jaw. Now the key with the jaw again is this idea of one hand grips, one hand feeds but all the time I'm connecting into the jaw. So it's not a case that I'm doing something like this and gripping and I'm losing it. Really a case that you're gonna engage the whole body in the movement. So just try a few with the feet, just kind of stuck down, as if they're kind of glued to the ground. Just play with this idea of feeding and connecting with one hand. That's it. Exactly. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Good. 
Okay, so we're just going to work now with this transition, working from Skikamai. Just feel the weight again, just you've got to now feel that you're kind of including the joint in the movement. So just take a few moments, work from a kind of very neutral position. Don't really worry about what's happening with the jaw, where the hand is. And then just feel that you're going to engage the hip, lengthen, and really have the sense of weighting the jaw down. So just try this both sides. You can work from any position with the hand, but just feel that you kind of chain link the movement. Bum, 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 bum. In a sense, you're kind of drawing, drawing the whole body back into the into the jaw. So just play left side, right side, very neutral from the beginning, and then just feel that you okay, go enter into the kamai, and the kamai should feel very very comfortable, as if I can kind of hold it for a very long time. <laughs> and what you're trying to do is really load the gel into the lower body. You're really trying to rank. That's it. So. Yeah, that's it. So. Good. And again, it's very, um, again, it sounds very obvious to say, but everything's now in the front and in the upper body. So it's almost impossible, or it's almost inevitable that everything happens in the front and in the, in the, the upper body. But really try and get a sense as you do this, that you're drawing the movement really down into the ground. So this is a little bit exaggerated, but just feel that you have a sense of anchoring the gel really in the lower body. So it's really got a sense of right in the lower body and not bang in the upper body. Just, just, just. And this is the beauty of the weapon strain in that it's, it's constantly challenging your ability to ground and find balance. That's it. And again, these very, very simple moves just reveal these kind of patterns that we've got of using the body. Good. Great. Okay, and the, again, it sounds going to sound really obvious, but there's a major difference now as we shift from athletic power to effortless power. The main difference is athletic power uses, uses pure, kind of almost pure strength. So in, in a way, athletic power feels like I'm doing something. It feels great. And it does feel great. It feels great to kind of throw a javelin, throw a shot, put all these kind of things. It feels great. Now, the, the pitfall in, in terms of effortless power training is it feels very weak so it feels actually counterproductive to what i want to do which is i feel like i want to generate strength and power but in a way you've got to go through this this kind of long 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 period where you really think it feels totally useless and totally empty so i come into this one and i feel oh, oh. It actually feels like nothing nothing's actually and my body my mind says it can't be like this because strength and power and involve feeling feeling this kind of feel this this feels good and feeling uh, feels kind of weak but in a way what i'm trying to do is really align the whole structure behind the behind the jaw so just feel like the direction i want to go towards is something that feels like nothing else so it's one of those cases where it the feeling of it's totally different so just try and see if you can kind of access it and it's a bit kind of disheartening in the beginning to really work on this and feel, ah, feels very weak. Feels like it won't really work. Good. And then we'll just go a little bit more active. So come in now into the command again, grounding it. Come in, find the top of the head, and then just change the legs. So just draw the body in, find the back. And then each time you're really looking for again the sense of kind of really kind of graceful movement. So just again, try and really slow it down, whole body generating the movement. So just kind of changing, kind of changing above the head.
Yes. Yeah, 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 good. Sounds. Okay. So, in terms of if, if we're looking at power or effective effective power use, we're, we're, what we're actually talking about is connection. And and for me, connection is a really huge word. So, what I what I usually do is break down connection into three parts. So, and the first one is about centering. So that this the, basically the, the key part of any kind of connection is that I'm working out from the from the core of the body. So, just feeling this movement now, the sense of connecting the center and into the jaw. So just use this now as a really a kind of centering exercise. Now, obviously all this relies on the work we've done before about grounding, balancing, relaxing. This is a big part of it. But just feel now a sense that the center initiates out. So feel like center periphery. Boom. All the way to the tip of the jaw. Center periphery. Just, just play a little bit with it. So this is the first kind of Area of connection to look at connection, Con uh, centering, centering. That's it. So, super, super, super. Okay, so we're just going to go into this pattern now. Very, very basic pattern. Try to spin on the left side. Draw the whole body in. Change sides. Try to spin the other side. Draw in. Change sides. So, very, 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 very basic pattern. Just work on really big, clear movements. Each time, really focus on finding the Kamai as you draw back. Ah. Ah, okay, good. So just make, I make a one distinction. It looks the same, but it's a totally different movement. So in this case, this isn't a strike. So this isn't a striking movement. This is, that's something else. So in this case, this is coming to the thrust and then changing, drawing back the body. So in this case, just open this movement out a little bit more here, bring the feet together, and then have a sense from here, I'm going to draw all the hip back with the jump. So it's got this kind of quality, rather than a quality of pressing the body down into a kind of strike, really find much more you're going to draw the body back this way. Okay, so it kind of looks like a similar movement, but it's got a different intention. So this is much more about drawing back. Yeah, there we go. That's nice, that's nice. So. So Nice. Okay, so th there's a there's a um, there's a re there's a Chinese principle I really like in, from the from, from the classic, and it's it's one thing moves, everything moves. That is, is what it says. One thing moves, everything moves. So what that basically says is that one thing moves. In this case, it's my connection to the ground. So it's actually my compression down into the foot in terms of this jaw work, and then as I as I as I compress the structure down everything goes with it. So the mistake people make in terms of connection work is to lock everything together. So one thing goes, everything goes, doesn't refer to the fact that the whole body moves together as one piece. It refers that as one thing goes, everything follows that, that movement. But the, what's really important in this case is my priority in the, fit, in the feet to compress the structure down. So it's really in a sense, this, everything goes. And in this case, as you find this move, compressing down into the front foot, everything goes. Everything goes with it. 
But it, this is very tricky because everything's, everything's telling you salt in the hands. I'm going to thrust salt in the hands. I'm going to draw salt in the hands. I'm going to thrust salt in the hands. But really just trying, in this case, really prioritize. And the structure, one thing, everything goes with it. One thing, everything goes with it. And it's just a matter of degrees of how much I can connect and allow the whole body to be to be kind of thrown with the movement. That's Okay, so I would normally build up to these kind of movements and, and work through the Saburi a little bit like what we did yesterday in the class for those if that was there. But what we're going to do is go directly into 11. So this really works on works on different kind of principles. I'm using a shorter stick just because of the, the ceiling, but in this case, what I want to do is really take your time to find this back position here rolling through and just find a strike here up. so really break this down now you find the kamai again weight in the weight underneath pull the body back strong extension draw the jaw forward and just back the position and then from here coming back into the kamai so just find that position so just work with number 11. go ahead go ahead Okay, good. So this is one of the most challenging suburbs in terms of connection. Yeah. One second. Hey, Julia. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Maybe, yeah. Julia. <laughs> Super duper. Great. Okay. Super, super, super. Okay, good. Okay, good. So the the oh hello. Hopefully you can't see me. Wait a minute. Can you see me? No. <laughs> Okay, well, the other pitfall in terms of effort that links to the last point I made, which is about it feels like nothing, is that I think I, I relate effortlessness to kind of a And in a sense, when we do Aikido work, it's about training the structure. Now, I, I shared a link once with about Buckminster Fuller and Tensegrity. Your structures are basically a structure that's, that's designed on a principle of Tensegrity. And in this case, I just talk, I talk too much. In this case, just watch that I don't go into looseness. Now, obviously, I... Don't, don't, don't correlate effortlessness with, with being lazy, in a sense, which is one of the kind of pitfalls with this work. Now, it, it, it means a lot of the time, because we, we carry so much tension, it means for a while going, you can go a bit lazy with it, which means going kind of ragdoll, a little bit kind of ragdoll with it. But just, just for now, see if you can access a kind of feeling where, especially in these kind of positions, I'm not holding myself in tension, I'm just setting the structure with, with a strong extension out from the center, and then it just kind of feels very stable, but it doesn't feel kind of loose. It doesn't feel like this. It feels strong, stable, and it feels very connected. But at the same time, I'm relaxed. So it's the difference between rela relaxation, allowing the body to kind of find its own structure and being lazy, where I'm basically just, boom, structures collapse, and I've lost all sense of, of, of extension. So this is the kind of tie rope we need to work with in terms of, in terms of power is, is I don't want it to do it and I don't want to hold tension. I don't want to be so lazy that it's kind of uh, feels like this. Okay, so just work now, especially this first position as you come through this. So it feels very, very, very strong. And then coming through to this position. Just be aware of this kind of 
in this work, it's the dangerous to be too, too, too loose. Awesome. Michael, one question. No, oh, go ahead. Uh, the sensation you're having when you're pulling back yeah. before you make the, tro the, the swipe, is that, the, is that like the same sensation as in a third Bogen Subui where you're standing like this? Hmm. This is slightly is, different. Yeah, it's... Mm. But is the third Subui more like a, a determined forward than this one? Okay, one second, I just try and find myself again. There we go. Okay, think in terms. Oh, la, 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 la. Okay, if, if, if I compare three and this movement, in terms of three, you're doing actually something else, and you're, you're kind of loading, you're drawing the movement out, and basically coiling the body down into this position. And the, 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 the bokken is basically coming to the back of the, back of the hip. Now, in this case, it's a different movement because the arms are extending out in this position. So it's, it's got the same kind of quality of grounding, but my, 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 the position of my arms is totally different. I mean, that sounds totally obvious, but this and this are really yeah. different. Yeah. Okay. But, They've got yeah. a similar quality in terms of three that, that I'm basically loading the body into it, into a kind yeah. of coil and then releasing it. Yeah, that was, that, was, uh, that was the answer to my question. Okay, good. Not, not the position of the hands, but more the, the sensation of being yeah. ready. Yeah, yeah, that, that same kind of quality is, is, is kind of yeah. that, I'm kind of drawing it in, coiling yeah. the body, coiling the center down. And then from yeah. here, the main difference in terms of this movement is this is a low to high movement. So it's got this kind of movement. And in terms yeah. of number one, it's actually a kind of explosion over the top yeah. and then strike yeah. forward. So that, that same kind of quality and over, that, that did, uh, based on the same principles. Yes, but the, the feet has got a kind of the bottom work's got a kind of explosive sharpness to it, and the jaw work's got a really a sense of an arc. Yeah, through the yeah. Exactly. But but yeah, but I got the right right answer that it was like the grounding before you yeah. take the move. Yeah, that's really yeah. Cool. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good. 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 Oh, yeah, I've left me. Let's see. Dang. 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 Okay. Okay. Good. So, ah, good, Adrian, good, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, good. Okay, good. So, if I go back to this discovery, this, this Greek sculpture, you'll one, one things I said about it. You've got a really clear grounded foot, and you've got the other foot's kind of peeling out. So, I just want you to work on the footwork. So, as you do this move, draw back, really feel that at this point the center is grounded right between the feet. And then at this point, as I go to make the strike, release the foot and sink into the front leg. And this, this back foot now has a sense of peeling out. Hopefully you can see the foot. It's kind of doing this. this. So all I want you to work from is from this position, just focus on releasing through the feet. So I'm going to compress into one foot and I'm going to allow the back foot to swing through, swing through all the time. The main problem with this Saburi is that I tend to leave the foot, come out of the foot, but I want to have the feeling I'm grounding down, down, through the move. But just play a little bit with that connection and the sense that the front foot grounding, compressing, and the back foot emptying and peeling out of the ground. So, and this, this is the case in a lot of the Saburi, but in, in this one especially, it's very, very important. Mm, good. Okay. So. Nice. And the, the last point, the other point I mentioned about this, this sculpture was this sense of the face being very calm. 
there's no sense of tension through, through, through transferring into the face. But basically that's the sculptor trying to express a feeling of high tension, relaxed and, 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 and calm. So the quality of being calm through this movie is also very important. It's very, obviously it's almost automatic. I can, and I come into this kind of position. But try and hit the sense of this, of a sense of real kind of calmness. This come in here, allow everything to just drain down and keep it. So it should have the feeling of no real tension through the movement. So just take the last few, do them very, very slow, and really with a sense now of calmness, which basically means the whole structure is going to have the sense of draining down towards the ground, which is especially important as you draw the arms up. Then I get into this kind of position, I'm trapped, or I just have the sense of everything draining down. Yeah, so just try a few, and then we're going to add some moves to this. Just this quality of calmness. This for me is the most most important quality in, in terms of Aikido, trying to create a sense of calmness through the whole body. So it should feel easy and it should look easy as well. It shouldn't look like hard work. That's it. Very nice. So, that's it, that's it, that's it. Nice, 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 nice. Very nice. Okay, good. So we're just going to add one more movement to this. Again, I'm about kind of making easy movements. So what makes the most sense from here is to come here. Everything's up. So it makes total sense now for me to just drop everything right, and come into this position. Yeah, so we're going to break this down a little bit. Come back, roll through, and now just let everything drop down. And then from here, you're going to roll back, find the command this way. Yeah, so you're going to do, you're going to do this. You're going to go one, two, three, and then four. We find the Kamai this way. Yeah, so you've got four movements. And again, see if you can just access this, this feeling from the very first exercise we do about kind of dropping. Think about the a ball, the Joe just basically just wants to drop towards the ground. And what I'm going to do is just align to that movement. So again, it's less about doing and more about aligning. That's it. Very nice. Good. Yes. That's it. That's it. That's it. So. Good. Okay, we're going to link this now together. So just just start the movement now here. So what I want to do is really find a very comfortable position. Again, yeah, it's very what you can do now is really this this starting from this position really gives you the opportunity to start from a balanced position. It's very easy in this case as I come through to be stuck in the front, and then this movement feels like I'm falling forward with it. So what I want you to do now we're going to link this this last move together. Really find the center of the movement. So just think about the middle. The middle, the middle. So the jaw should feel really calm, very supportive. And then from here, just drop everything down and then roll back. 
for this way. So just play a little bit with this. First, break it down. So really find the middle, draw, find the middle, draw, find the middle. Okay. And then when you feel like you've got that, just come now into this. So you've got this weighted down, drop, roll through. You're just going to come straight back into the command. So just play a little bit with these levels, very basic, and then just make it a little bit more fluid. So. Good. So what this movement now reveals as you go a little bit faster or a little bit more fluid is as I come through this move, the tendency is for the jaw to kind of bounce back up, to rebound back up. Think in terms of this constantly my relationship to the ground. So think down, 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 down. So the jaw constantly has this feeling of being drawn down towards the ground. What I don't want to do in this case is hold the jaw up and then find it. So just look for this, this, this should feel like inevitable. The movement just comes down. So it just feels like, and I just align to that downwards movement. So I think the Joe just wants to swing down and do that. Just wants to come towards the ground. So I just align to that and just find it. So, so just play a little bit with it. And it might mean again, going to a little bit of looseness and then trying to kind of reintegrate the, the structure to it. Uh, so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Much better. Nice. That's it. That's it. That's it. So. Good. Okay, the last few couple of minutes in this case, just now try and link this all together. So you roll back, roll through, drain down. Okay, so really keep this nice and slow. And again, look for a quality of calmness. Again, I can do it. Lots of effort. Or I can do it with a sense of clarity and calmness. So, so again, it should feel very easy. It should feel like I'm not really, really, really putting so much effort into it. Just try a few, just nice and fluid. Last, last, last minute or so. Just trying to link the whole movement together. Back inside, good. <laughs> good. Mm. Great, so. Good. 
and obviously there's tons of technical points in this so i can't i can't make all of them and because of the nature of these classes i can't see them all so what i want what i just wanted to focus on now is is, is the whole body movement and really the quality now is is, is shifting from from basic static training to now this kind of kino nagai state is really the sense of of dragging the jaw through the movement so when we tend to do basic patterns we tend to move the jaw with the whole body the jaw and the bodies kind of move move together but try and get a sense now of a flexible connection so it's really the sense that the body 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 draws the jaw body 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 draws the jaw body so so think in terms of a chain chain through the structure which is basically center to the periphery and that basically means the jaw is going to the periphery and the jaw is going to follow the center so it's going to have the fear not being dragged through and I said this like yesterday, it's a bit like being a, it's a bit like a slap. So it's like a slap through. Now I can lock the body together like this, or I can release the body. In this case, just work on the sense of releasing. Just the last few. But it's not a technical quote. It's a it's a it's a question of feeling. Just 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 the last few. And again, it's best done slow, clear. Movements. That's uh, nice, 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 nice. Very nice. So, <laughs> so, so very nice. So. So oh, very nice. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. But this is the, what I, the, the main point of this is. I usually break them down to kind of three C's. The three C's are basically uh, being centered. The first one's being centered. The second one's being connected. The second one's being connected, and the third one's about being calm. So this is all. This is all kind of. They're, they're obviously very much interlinked. So they're kind of like this kind of three. Not really separate, but in this case, you're really looking at connection, centering, and being very calm through the movements. That's basically the, this kind of three, three kind of areas of this. Okay, so we'll take a bow out, take a quick break, and then continue. So, hi. Hello, Arigato Okay, take it. So we'll just start in the oh, This nice basic pattern. So you're just going to come down, really use the hands, draw down, roll down the body, and come up. So just use this at the moment as a kind of as a kind of self massage for the back, especially after doing these kind of swings through the body and also this weapon work, especially these katate series. Bit hard on the back, so just use this exercise just to free up the body again. Keep going. Uh, okay, good. Just watch one thing in this case, just watch the hips. So in this case, really try and use this exercise to free and open the hips up. So try and feel the hips are really independent, or they, 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 they can function independently. So basically try and really open this area. Try and avoid using the hips like as one piece, which basically leads to this kind of movement, which feels very stiff, very heavy. So look for a sense of the lower body being very mobile. And again, paralyzing the lower over the upper. Allow the upper body to be dragged by the lower body. So. So. Good, keep going. You stand up to see. Okay, good. Ah, okay. okay, 
Good. And um, we're going to work on cocky work. So we're going to, this is a bit more apparent in the forward roll, but it's also here in the backward roll. So just watch my arms. When you do this, really try and mobilize the handwork. So you're always, I think in Aikido, what you're always working cocky, whether you're taking ukemi or you're doing the technique. So think in terms of now with, with the ukemi work, really think about working a sense of cocky through the hands. So think about really utilizing the hands and the arms to the fullest. It means really, again, kind of mobilizing and translates later into this kind of work we do with timing spirals. Just see if you can, if you can kind of find the, find the arms, include the arms. Hmm. Okay, good. And and one mistake with cocky work is to see cocky as a position. So to see it as a kind of uh, and and then kind of the, the body's basically locked together. So you you are coming into a position in terms of cocky work, but it's not it's not coming into a warm position and locking it. So it, what that basically translates to you now what I see a little bit. It's like I'm in the position with the hands. And then I kind of do the, this is really exaggerated, but there's a sense of doing this. But really, in this case, really use the hands up, I'm really in the ground. And I'm really gonna roll down the arm. So again, the hips are mobile, but also the hands are very mobile and free. But the moment I lock them, I'm just locked the upper body. So I've, I've lost all that flexibility in the body. So really, yeah, that's the few more. Just try and really loosen, loosen, loosen the body up this way. Yeah, just try. So cocky is an expression of the center out, out through the through the periphery. It's not, it, it's not really a position. Ah, uh, sir. That's it. Nice. Good. 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 And especially if you're on a hard floor, very, very necessary. Good, burning, very nice. Yes, 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 great, good. Okay, good. Just be careful if you're on a hard floor now, do this very, very slow. We're just gonna do a four also. Just come here, do this very, very slow, and I want to really break it down into stages. So you're gonna find the hand, find the knee with the, with the opposite hand, roll the leg back, and really place the shoulder into the ground. And then from here, just keep in the sense of cocky. Roll the body over. I'm just going to here, this position. Okay. And then you can either change sides or just keep the same side, depending on how you feel. But really find that hand. Find the leg. Find this position where you're in a, in a really strong cocky position. Find the shoulder. Roll the body over. And then just do here. Yeah, just give it a try. If the ground's really hard, stick to a stick to a backward draw. If you don't want to go into a forwards. If you're hardcore, go for the forward row. Good. So, very nice, very nice. I'm gonna spotlight Bernie because he's doing it very nice. Very nice. That's it, exactly. So, great. Perfect. Really great. So, so, so. Good. Okay, the last one, just work with from a standing position. And all I want you to do is, is we work on this sense of spiraling into the ground. Cocky works all about spiraling. So just think now, use use whatever you, whatever kind of role you like. Keep it, you can keep it very simple or complex, depending on your space. But just keep a sense now you're going to spiral, spiral, spiral into the ground, nice and slow. Find the ground, roll down, find your base, and then come back up. So it's just very nice and nice and clean. But just think about using a kind of spiral pattern through the body. So into the ground, spiraling 
oh, spiraling down. And, and this should feel very kind of light. It shouldn't feel kind of heavy on the body. Just keep it nice and slow. And again, it's a question of kind of connection and, and kind of calmness through the body. That's it. Good, Oscar. Good, very nice. Good. Mm -hmm. So, very nice. Good. Okay, good. I'm trying to stay up on topic because if I go to your chemistry, it's a totally different subject entirely. So we're going to go into Tai Jutsu work. So just all I want you to do is, is we're going to basically link it to the, to the feeling that you have in the first Subaru. So what I want to do is, is just find the feet, find the balance here. Just relax the hands down. Just feel the weight of the body just for a second. Feel the whole weight stacks and settles into the ground. Just, and you'll find the mass just settled right into the base. Here. Good. And then from this position, I would try to engage through the hands, draw the whole body up into an upward swing. So the hands have come up, the foot comes back, just like you're doing the first of brood. And then from here, you're gonna find a tiny hand composition. Just fine in this position. Good. And then each time what I want you to do is just release and come back to this position. So again, very simple and very much broken down. So find this position here, really ground the body, do nothing, engage the hands with, with the body, and then raise up, draw up through the back leg, and then sink, find the time angle position, and then just raise back to this position. Yeah, so just kind of cycle through this pattern. Going, <clears throat> raising, settling, and come into position. Could you just have a look at the hand position at the very end, Michael? When, when you've got this hand position, you're in, imagine, oh. imagine like the back of the wrist is kind of a, a little bit like the back, the back of the wrist is hitting something. So it's got a sense of, it's got a sense of this quality. And feel that the, feel that the, the part from the palm of the hand, the sense of expansion out, so it's got this kind of quality, like a kind of flower, like a, like petals of a flower kind of opening out. It's got this kind of quality here. Good, thank you. Good. Good, good, good. So. Okay, good. And if you've got your object nearby, just kind of weighted objects that you, you've got, something like this, just do the same idea. So. This is really the kind of same idea as working with the Bokken. So first release down, do nothing. And then what you're going to do is draw up, really get a sense of the, the, the weight. There's this statue that you might know, like a laughing Buddha, and he's got the balls like this through the elbows. So the alignments, the alignments down through the elbows into the hip. And then from here, just you're in this position back, just feel the weight drop down and that. So now it's just a feeling of the, 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 the hips catching the hands and the, the weight of the object settling into the palm of the hand. It's got this kind of quality. So you're just, again, just stacking the body. And again, it's not about doing, it's just about alignment through the whole body. So just now going to kind of repetition, you're gonna go from this position, engage, draw straight up, draw down. And in the case of this, you can also do left and right. It's really, it's the same, it's exactly the same position, which isn't the case with the Bokken work. So just play now with drawing, rolling up. Look at the alignment between the elbows, hips, oh. and then just drop it down straight into the position. You can use your grapefruits or your stones. Good. Good. Ah. Yeah, good. Ah, okay. Okay, good. Ah, good. 
So again, the, the main habit in, in terms of in terms of cocky work, and because everything's in the front, all the sensors are in the front, the tendency is to is to collapse to the, towards the front and basically lose a sense of the back. What that translates to here is a bit like this coming into this position, where I'm basically the, the, the arms are closed together and I'm basically crunched forward. This is about like working on a computer like this all day. But I, what I want to do is a sense of expansion, openness, and extension. So just look, which basically translates in a kind of technical point of the position between the, between the hands or the distance between the hands. I want them to be basically aligned with the hips, but I don't want to be close where they're basically where I'm trapped. So think about the alignment between the hips and the hands, this, which is totally personal to you. So you've got to kind of go and copy my form, try and find what feels the most efficient, the most relaxed, the most open. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Good, 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 good. So, very nice. I'm just going to do one more, and this is a bit like doing a Zengo, Zengo Giri with the Bokken. So first again, just, just let yourself find the ground. Don't really do anything. Let the body settle down, drain through the back leg. Just engage into the posture with, with the hands. Feel that you just, just kind of, a little bit like when you come into Kamai with the sword. It's just engage, but very neutral at the same time. And then from here, just find that you roll through into a cocky position. And we're going to go into this kind of Zengo. So you're going to roll to the back. Press through, roll to the back, press through, roll, press, roll, press. That's nice. good, good, good. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah, and it's almost inevitable in this case, we tend to watch what we're doing. So I've got these objects in mind, I try and watch them. Now, the moment I watch them, you see all the, the, just automatically the posture collapse. So really get a sense of what you're actually doing, which isn't, isn't I'm not really focused on the hands at all. What I'm focused on is passing a spiral out through the hands. And my attention is well, out. But my attention is not on my own body. My attention is out. So extension is about something leaving the body. If you think in terms of the cut with the bock and the, the cut is about a release out. But it's not about what's happening with the sword. It's about something leaving the body. And this is the case here. So just focus on a point outside of yourself and extend to that point. Roll, extend. Now, especially when you make the rotation as well. If I look down, I collapse the form. But if I roll the body with a sense of, the, of my focal point, I keep the body basically stacked. That's uh, much better. Bro. So, so, so. Very good. Mm. Okay, just try a few without the without the kind of objects or without the weight. What I'm seeing a little bit, one of the problems with using weights is we tend to, because I'm holding something, we tend to tighten. So what I what I want to focus what I want to focus on now is as you make this rotation movement, think of passing a, a coiling movement through the spine. So there's a sense of release through the whole spine. So hopefully you can see my spine does that. There's a real sense of flexion through the spine. Because I'm holding something, the tendency is to do this. 
ah, so I'm basically locking the whole spine up. So I really think in terms of this, there's a real sense of release towards the ground. Release that. Release that. And so hopefully there's, a, there's, there's more sense of flexibility in it. I know you can do this with the object, or you can do it without, but it's, it, in, in a sense, it might be easier without. Ah, good. Nice, nice. So. Oh. Good. So we're just going to go to this pattern now. So we did a kind of tiny co position, coming into a kind of position like a tight, uh, like a cursor bird. But in this case, what I want to do is, is do the full movement like we do with the rotation. So first, find the ground, find the extension, sink the body in, keep the sense of freedom through the spine, roll to the back. Now, I want you to do one of two things either roll the body forward and find a cocky position, or as you find this position, roll towards the back. So just play with one or two, one or one of two things. Tiny extension, the tiny angle is always the same. Now I can either go forwards or backwards. And then release, find the movement, roll into a compute position. So just play with this kind of set of movements. And just explore either this backwards cocky cocky roll or a forwards. Yeah, and you can do with or without the, the kind of weighted object. Good. Okay, so we're going to go into the, if you grab your belt or band or whatever you've got, we're going to go just a little bit sideways and go back into kind of cocky work. So the main work of cocky work in, in terms of generating the power is, is making the connection between the hip and the hand. So if you've got a band like this, something like this, keep, keep the, this is a kind of short band. So I basically keep the, the point of the center, this hand on the center, and I just play with just rolling it this way. Now the first step is just to get a sense of an arm through the uh, a sense of a spiral through the body. If you've got a belt, if you've got a belt, just hold it like this. So you've got this position. The key thing is always that the, this part of the hand is is being pressed out, and then just do the same thing. Just basically hold it to the center. Find the kind of appropriate distance, and just play with finding a spiral through the hand. You can play with the position, with a belt, I find it a little bit easier to kind of anchor it to the back hip because you don't have the sense of flexibility with the belt. It's a little bit more easy to find this kind of position. So just play a little bit with this and I'll try and show both if people have got. Yeah, okay, there's a mix. So I'll show you both variations. Ah, nice. Okay, good, good, good. Mm. Okay, good. Yeah, so first point, we, we tend to get, because we, when we talk about cock you, we have an image, probably, you probably have an image of something like this happening with the hand. So there's a tendency to think cock you work is only the hand. And if you see now, watch my body, nothing's happening. But really the, the idea of cocky is whole body power. So if we talk about efficient power, athletic power, whatever kind of power, it means, it means integrating the whole body into the movement. So just focus now a little bit, open the movement out, but really get a sense of the whole body 
engages. Three pedal, engages, engages. And just play a little bit with the connection, depending on what you've got, band or belt. <coughs> just really, really focus all the time the hip. Hip, engage, hip, engage. So it's about creating this connection between the hip and the hand, but it's just in, in essence about the whole body, integrating the whole body. And in Aikido work, where that means basically working with spirals. So obviously you can do this in a linear way, but in terms of the work we do is really about spiraling movement, spirally movement. Spirally is a word as well. I found it in the dictionary, spirally having the quality of a spiral. <laughs> good. Okay, good. Ah, yeah, 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 good. Good. Mm. So. Okay, and just watch this, try, try and make a distinction now between a kind of movement which is like this, which is a basically, it's an arc, but it's basically a, a kind of a linear arc. Linear arc, is that good? In a way that movement's very linear. It's an arc, but it's very linear. So look for a sense of flexibility. So the, the main work in the in sense of cocky work is really, in a sense, this. So when I talk about spirals with the cocky, I'm really, I'm really, hopefully, really working with a spiral through the whole joint. This means the whole joint is limber. So it's really got the quality of spiral. You know, flamenco dancers in Spain, they do this kind of, these kind of movements. Or Bollywood dancers, they do this kind of movement. So just, just go a little bit again outside the Aikido. Just think about making the joint flexible. So it should feel very fluid. The old kind of analogy in Aikido terms was like a hose pipe with water gushing out of it. And in a sense, as soon as I make it rigid, I block, it's like I close the water pipe off. So think about these kind of movements. So just play a little bit outside the world of Koku. Just mobilize it. Just play with your own arm a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right good and make sure to do both sides yeah that's it sure good yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a very nice yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna spotlight you shorter because you're doing something i'm not yes very nice yes there we go there we go Exactly. Super. Very nice. Great. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Super, super, super. Good. Very nice. So. Okay, good. So we're going to go into Marotidori Kokivo. So going back to a kind of function, functional Aikido technique, if you can use your band also, so this is very interesting to use. But we're just going to look at this very first movement. So find the band. You go like this position. Again, align it to the center, or, or if you've got the belt, align it to the, to the back hip if you, if you feel you need more. And in this case, just focus on the first the extension out, and then really now focusing on spiraling down and extension out this way. Just this, mo just this motion, so extension, expanding through the whole system, and then releasing towards the ground, and rolling up in a spiral. So just break this movement down into two, and do both sides. So just extend, coil down into the ground, and then really try and locate the spiral in the body. Coil it back up it's in this position. Just play a little bit with it. Ah, okay, good. Ah, very nice, very nice, very nice.
Okay, we're going to do a slightly different one. This, this, we'll try and, and I'll try and try and try it with both. But in this case, this is like doing a Rio Todori. So what I'm interested now is in doing both sides of the body. So basically, you're going to find a position where I extend into both sides, and now you're going to do this form. You come here to this form here, and then from here you release all the way over this way. So the form you're doing is now this Rio Todori. You coil in this way and then you coil out this way. And just play a little bit with this. Try and play with the band if, if you need, because it gives a good sense of resistance. And a good, well, actually feedback. It's actually just a good feedback. Resistance is the wrong term for us, but just feel, you're basically gonna have the hands like this. Now, the key to this is that both, both of the edges of the, the blades of the hands are pressing out, so that that tension is here, this kind of position. And now as I go in, I maintain the tension roll through, coil out, press down this way. Just play a little bit with it. Mm, good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the, 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 the kind of throwing part is the difficult part to, to do with the band. So actually what I'm really on, what I'm really interested in, in this kind of training when I do this is this first coil, this first coil in. So again, this sense of, if I go into a sense of looseness, then I lose, I lose all the tension in the band. So what I want is a sense of extension expanding out. And then as I go in, I do it with full extension, the coiling up this way. So there's a sense of winding up through so this, this extension really stays. Now as I release it again, I keep it, keep it coming through. So just don't don't necessarily go to the full throw because it's actually the band will actually restrict you to do it. So just come to this position, find the extension, coil through, and then just go to this point, just where you find this point. That way. So just about these first spirals. Spiral number one, spiral number two coming through. Let's play with it. Good, 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 good. That's it. That's it. Nice. Okay, so what I'm seeing a little bit with, with some people, when you do this, is you, the tendency is just to lift the arms up, but, but with no sense of connection to the ground. So just make this connection super clear as you come to this position, the feeling is really the ground and I press out of the ground. So the, feel that the raise of the arms is done by compressing the structure down, but the raise is not done by lifting the arms. Again, if I lift the arms, I basically isolate, isolate the arms of the shoulder. But feel that in this case the, the, the arms are actually starts in the low in the in the lower back. So feel that the arms are actually connecting into the lower back. So you've got this quality and then bang, I ground and then I release the arms from the ground. Bang, it's got this kind of quality. Yeah, just play a little bit with it. So just try and link the arms basically to the lower to the lower back. Link the lower back to the ground and then you're all set up. Bang. Awesome. So much better. Great. Good. And then just for the th for the kind of grounding part of the throw, just come back to the weighted objects, or if you've not got, just just use with the, with the arms, just the empty hand. So just do the same position to find the ground. Coil in, and then again focusing on the ground, springing up, and now you've got this extra room where I'm going to drain the whole body down into the ground. So really using the lower body and 
slotting the whole body into the ground this way. Just playing out with this, roll in, ground, release, ground, everything down. Bam, go straight into the ground. Uh -huh. Good. And just use the weight if you've got it to just give you a little bit of feedback on the structure, especially this last position. There we go. Yeah, sit. Nice. Okay, and just a few times, just try and exaggerate the movement. So I'm a big fan of, of, of exaggerating the movements a little bit. Sometimes I do in the dojo, but in this case, really get a sense of this last move. Raise, come through, and then really exaggerate this last move. So I'm really gonna come into the ground and I'm gonna have the feeling of compressing the whole structure down. Now this is obviously challenging to the structure. So if I in any way crunch, collapse, I will feel straight away. This is really, really not a good place to be. So really focus on extension through the upper body and really the movement is grounded in the lower body. It's a bit like doing a big heavy squat, but it's like this, and this straight down. And the upper, the upper body should feel like it's just slotted into the lower body. And if you go back to these kind of exercises we had before, it's exactly the same principle. It's just a little bit more dynamic. So let the weight just drop. Boom. And again, it goes back to the original. Let everything drop. Just drops. Just drops. It's just wherever everything's going. You just align to it. Yes. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Okay, good. So those are kind of the basics. We're going to go a little bit longer. So those kind of core basics, or those kind of core techniques that we've got, basically Taina Henko, Maruro Tadori, and then later Swarov of Kokiho, those really form the blueprint for how we use the body. And, and we can basically go to now any technique, and you basically apply those same principles in it. So what I'm not going to do is focus, focus on a specific technique. We might do, depending on what people do. But what I want to just focus on with the, with the band or with the bell, just focus on this case now of moving the whole body and finding a cocky movement. So you can stick to one. The, the basic is if you think in terms of ikkyo. So I go back to this constantly, constantly, because it's so such a it's kind of fundamental movement. And the, the principles are very, very clear. So just go to this one. Notice this kind of side, sideways slice. Try both sides. The whole body creates the movement. That's it. Michael, I need to bow out. Bow out. Okay, okay. Uh, order <laughs> obligations. <laughs> See you tomorrow. 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 Okay, good, good, good. So. Ah. Good. 
Okay. And again, just try and make a distinction now between pushing the arm out and coiling and spiraling the structure. So really think that what you're doing is this, 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 rather than kind of leaving, leaving the body. So think in terms of, again, connecting into the structure. I'm going to do it with a spiral, 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 spiral. Just like that. So just play a little bit with it. So good. Fast, fast, fast. So. Good. And then what I want to do is just open the movements out. So you can do any kind of cocky work now. Just think about cocky. So the same basic principles. Cocky. What I want you to do is really focus on uniting the body with the cocky. So whatever kind of footwork you want, just try and match it with the handwork. So any kind of coiling, spiraling movement, just really open it out. Do a few on both sides, on one side, and then change to the other side. So just, just really play a little bit with the side. That's it. That's it, nice, nice. Yes, Okay, just explore now, really opening the movements out. So you've obviously got these very old, very basic kind of static moves, slide to the side, rolling up this way, these kind of very static, basic movements. Just now start to have the feeling you can open the movements out. So work now with much bigger moves. Just start to explore now a little bit more eager. And a little bit more challenging, or a lot more, a lot more challenging. Coiling, and depending on what you've got, belt or band, just really start to explore different movement patterns. And the very last thing, most of you are going here already, so just, just keep going. Just start to now have the feeling you can work into techniques. So good techniques like Ikkyo, just have a sense you can really have a feeling of the ground and a sense of a very calm, connected movement. So you should feel very balanced, hopefully very centered, and really with a sense of a strong, powerful copy at the end of the movement. Always trying to kind of align to these principles we've looked at. 
all morning. So we are aligning the body to gravity. Really using these kind of arcing movement patterns passing through the whole body. And now really applying a sense of cocky through the whole movement. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So very nice. Good. And then what I want to let go of the band or the bell and just do this now with the open, with open hands, empty handed. And what I want to focus on now is flexibility and a sense of rolling away through the whole movement. So now feel that this is kind of open, big movements and really with a sense of the quality of passing a big, big, big way through the body. So this needs a kind of open structure connected all the things we've worked on. And this is a kind of theme for our next seminar, next workshop is to work on a sense of a fluid wave through the body. Just that. For me, they're all kind of inter interconnected. So just look a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more fluid, and like a kind of wave or a whip through the body. That's it. That's it. And almost all the techniques you do will go towards the ground. It's about pressing the person through the ground. This is the difference from a discus play, which is, a, is about throwing something through the air. This is about pressing someone through the air. So just try and think about the intention behind the movements, which is about really suppressing someone down. Last couple of... So... Yeah, and if you feel like it, go back to the objects as well, just the last few. You feel sometimes you can feel a bit too free. I've got empty hands, I can do whatever I like, but if I've got something to relate to, it also challenges me. Get the structure. Just one more minute. That's it. And last 30, 20, 20 seconds, just do this really slow. So very, 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 very slow. And then kind of cool down, very slow. And again, just looking at the balance, the structure, connection, all these things. And the slower I go, the more I need to really align to the principles or I just hold myself in tension. Just see if you can find a sense of relaxation, calmness, and clarity in the movements. Nice and slow. And just as you do it, just go slower and slower till you feel you want to stop. So. Very nice, very nice, very nice. So, okay, that's it. We'll stop there. So we'll power up. If you have any questions, you can you can ask now or you can contact me later. So hey, Tomo, Arigato, Oh, Arigato, Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Bye all. Bye bye.